Right. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Liz Sward, and we're talking recruiter enablement. Liz, thanks for joining me today. Give us a quick introduction to you. Sure. Thank you for having me. Um, I am a recruiter. I've been in the business about 10 years now, and primarily I've been a consultant for an RPO style kind of engagement. So essentially, if you're not familiar with the model, I would act as an embedded resource for either an existing TA team or a business that has no TA structure. Um, engagements might be very short term and project focused. So a few weeks building out a sourcing plan moving on to several years, right? And really kind of building out a TA team, hiring my backfill. So that is my background. Um, in the next few months, I'm going to be putting out my shingle and doing this as, you know, an individual resource. Uh, so more information to come there, but that's a little bit about me and what I intend to do. Great. Okay. So let's get into recruiter enablement. What is it to you? Recruiter enablement is ensuring that your talent acquisition partners and recruiters have the resources available to do their job in a way that is effective. So reducing the amount of administrative load, reducing the things that can be done by a robot, you know, essentially, and allowing them the opportunity to play some jazz. So having the structure that allows them to, you know, really lean into their strengths, you know, assessing candidate profiles, that's recruiter enablement. Play some jazz. Jazz is freestyle and jazz is the thing that you need intuition for, whereas the robots can do the techno. Yeah, the repetitive yep. stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> Great. So um, give us some examples of anything that you've maybe done in this area, which has been useful for teams that you've worked in um, or things that you, you you would recommend talent acquisition teams should yeah. be doing. So and I obviously, you know, I've been engaging with these videos and watching some content. So, you know, definitely echoing what other people have said. Uh, you know, building out an ATS, having a good recruitment tech stack that can support the business. And by the way, you know, I've driven the Rolls Royce of an ATS versus the Ford Pinto. You do not need to spend a ton of money. You just have to know what your tools are available um, and really invest the time into building it out to be a functional resource to support you. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, and then also, you know, having a, a forum or a platform for knowledge sharing. Right. So there's no reason to rebuild the wheel every single time you walk into a position. <laughs> you know, there are things like, you know, the elevator pitch for the company, you know, piggyback off someone else, adapt to your own style. Um, the area that I wanted to focus, just because I feel it gets a little bit neglected, um, you know, in TA conversations is hiring manager enablement. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of using your lingo because I know, you know, the recruiter enablement, I've heard candidate enablement. Um, oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. So hiring manager engagement and buy-in is so critical. Um, I heard once that the number one predictor of a successful hire is the recruiter's relationship with the hiring manager. Yeah. And I don't bother to, to validate that claim. I don't know where it came from, but intuitively it's true. Yeah, so same. absolutely. Yeah. And I think that people shy away from the topic a little bit, maybe because it feels unscalable. Um, you know, like maybe there's a recruiter who just earns the buy-in really easily, right? How do you repeat that? How do you get other recruiters to that place? Um, so that is what I wanted to focus on. And the key thing, I think there's two really tactical things you can do to make it a scalable process. Um, one is the intake meeting. Yeah. So, and again, we're, we're talking mostly to a TA audience, right? So I can get a little bit in the weeds. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when you enter an intake meeting, let's say you have 30 minutes with a hiring manager, um, come in with a little bit of empathy for their situation, right? Like you're not the first recruiter to cross paths with them. They may have had a bad recruiter in front of them at some point. Um, they're not necessarily coming in willing to spill their heart to you and share all their pain. So when you come in, don't use 30 minutes to say, what is your team size? How much revenue do you generate? You know, what is the position? Come in armed with that information. You can get it elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. Focus instead on questions like, tell me about your most successful hire. Where did that person come from? What made you confident in making that decision? Um, this is going to really start to reveal 
how to engage the, the hiring manager. It's also, and I know nobody likes to talk about this, it's going to start to reveal some of their bias. So mm. everybody has it. Um, I have some bias, right? Um, everybody has it. It's always unintentional. You know, I don't know anybody that's actively saying, I want to exclude this group of people. Um, but it can really inhibit us from making the best hire imaginable. So let's say somebody set, has it in their mind that I only want to hire somebody that I can really dig in and get a, a backdoor reference on, right? Like somebody yeah. that has worked with somebody I know. Let's start to investigate. How do we challenge that? How do I get to the point where my feedback and my thoughts are as valid as that guy you worked with 10 years ago? right? We can get there. Um, it also kind of informs the strategy of interviewing, right? So, you know, if you know somebody's coming in with a little bit of bias, maybe you want to take a little bit more of a structured approach to interviewing and assign some competency-based interview questions, um, focusing on skills rather than gut reactions, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I never want to hear this person is not a culture fit unless you have something that backs it up. The other thing I would say is data. So ATS, you know, again, it doesn't have to be fancy. You can do it with a Google Doc. Um, but come in ready to make some commitments. So every week, I'm going to send you a pipeline status report. Um, I'll send one of my favorites is my currently in and my ever in um, so that you can see the pipeline as it is today. And then the historical, like the week over week kind of traction. Um, make that commitment and do it so that the yeah. hiring team knows where your activity is. Um, really, really quick kind of buy-in, you know, value adds is at the end of the intake call, maybe say something like, okay, later today, I'm going to jump on LinkedIn. I'm going to identify three candidate profiles, uh, and shoot them your way. And I need your feedback. Tell me where I'm missing the mark, what you like, what you don't like. Creating these really small commitments and honoring them just really quickly, you know, kind of elevates your your status in their eyes, and you're going to see much quicker buy into the process. And this is scalable, right? Like we're talking having some set questions for an intake meeting, having some you know generalized reports that we know we can lean on. Um, and once you do it a few times, it's second nature. So. I, I, I mean, I could I could not agree more. And you're right. This is not something we've talked about much on this channel. And hiring manager enablement is a really important part of this. I, I absolutely agree. And I think using data, um, as you've suggested, it's very powerful. I think that um, what you described around, uh, you know, go to the meeting armed with information about that team already. So you're not spending your time fact finding about the basic things mm -hmm. you should already know about. Look, your colleague's going to probably have to go and talk to that hiring manager about a different role in three, four days' time anyway. If you've got that information stored centrally somewhere then and everybody's got access to it, then that's really um, uh, going to save everybody a lot of time. It's going to save the hiring manager a lot of frustrating time doing the basic, you know, sort of information um, transferal. And then the other thing that you said, which... Um, I think is uh, really important on this is also, uh, you know, you can you you can template quite a lot of this stuff so that um, the types of conversations that you you can template a lot of the process around. Mm -hmm. Here's what you're going to do next, but also here's what you expect of that hiring manager as well. So if you set out like a two-way service level arrangement, several service level agreement. And and you'll you'll go back to them within tw within 24 hours with here's three profiles, and they'll come back to you within 24 hours of that with yes you're on the mark or no you're not but if you're not then why, and it's mm -hmm. a complete two way like arrangement. Um, I think that that sort of templating of the format that they should expect and they should adhere to mm -hmm. is is very powerful. I think too you know. Um... A recruiter should walk in with the expectation that we're going to give a little bit more than we get at first. Um, it is a two-way street, right? But classic example, let's say a hiring manager wants me to do all their interview scheduling. I'm going to eventually fight that battle because that's not time well spent. But I might need to prove some value before I take that on. 
Yep. So we want to get to that trust level where I say, hey, listen, I have 40 hours in my work week. I get to devote five hours to the position that I'm hiring for with you. Do you really want two of those hours spent playing, you know, Jenga with a calendar? Your call. And they always say no once you demonstrate value. No, I, absolutely. Absolutely. So, look, Liz, um, I know you've got loads of other things to talk about on this <laughs> subject, but we're doing these in bite sized uh, chunks. So we're going to bring it to a close at this point, but um, big takeaways for me around the concept of hiring manager enablement and how do we make that better, better experience for everybody and more scalable. You're going to do recruitment better if you do it like this. Um, Liz, watching your next move with great anticipation, looking forward to seeing your website and you know how it's all going to play out. And uh, you know, there'll be people that are watching this who it might be the first time they've come across you. Uh, they should probably follow you on LinkedIn and then they'll get to see what's next from, from Liz Schwerd as well. So thank you for taking the time to join me today. It's been great to talking, talking to you. You too. Thank you.